Hi everyone. Today we're going to talk about uh, memes. I know it seems kind of weird to be talking about memes in a uh, professional communication course, but memes are an important part of professional communication, or at least they become a part of professional communication. Um, your reading is going to teach you all about the history of memes, uh, where the the, the origin of the word and, and all that comes from. So I'm not going to go into a lot of that. I just really want to kind of set up the context and why we're even talking about it. Now memes, when you think about memes, you think about um, something probably a little bit silly. And I think with good reason, memes have become ways to express yourself, everything from anger to exasperation about a, something that's going on, perhaps the government or something in your own life. Memes have also become some type of symbolic uh, form of communication between friends and family and, and uh, even you and society. Um, but memes have some very specific rhetorical aspects that you have to consider, and they can be used when used correctly. They can be used for professional communication purposes, okay? So let's go out and let's sort of look at some memes and talk about them just a little bit in terms of... Uh, what they represent, what they do. Uh, we'll talk about them rhetorically and we'll see how they can be used or how they are used in professional communication, okay? Uh, I looked up the best memes or the, the most famous memes and I, I found this article, the 100 greatest memes of all time. So let's see what you guys think of this, how many of these um, you might recognize. Um, the Fortnite one, uh, let's see, I'll just go ahead and replay the video. How many of you play Fortnite or know for Fortnite, know anything about Fortnite? Um, so this is the disco floors are safe are a safe haven. Whatever. I got to be honest with you, I, I don't really understand this meme. Sure, I'm old, but even if I wasn't old and I didn't play Fortnite, I wouldn't understand it, right? Now, if you don't play Fortnite, the same could probably be said for you, okay? This is a meme that we've that I've seen quite a bit. It's the American Chopper argument where the dad yells at the son, the son yells something back, and then the dad yells something else. So that's a meme that's going around Old Town Road. Um, let me skip down to some other ones that we see a lot. Honey Badger. <laughs> honey Badger, the Honey Badger meme came out, gosh, must have been six years ago, something like that. It's been out for, for quite a while. I don't know if you remember that one. Uh, we'll keep going. Michael Jackson eating popcorn. That's kind of a, this is a fun one. Where do you typically see this one? Uh, I typically see this one when uh, somebody's having uh, somebody puts out something dumb on Facebook um, and the comments explode and people start having arguments in the comments. Somebody will invariably post this as their comment because why? What does it mean? What does it symbolize? Well, that means they're enjoying watching these people fight in the comments, right? It's kind of funny. I actually enjoy this one quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Scumbag Steve. Uh, might recognize that one. Distracted Boyfriend. This is this is always a funny, funny one. Uh, Grumpy Cat. Grumpy Cat's now passed on, so rip Grumpy Cat. My daughter was, was very, very sad about that. Aliens is one of my favorites, too. Love that guy. Are you not entertained? Um, anyway, it goes on and on. But memes come from a long time ago sometimes. So this is Rebecca Black's Friday. This came out, I believe, 2010, 2011. Now this, this, uh, the idea of this article is it's kind of like AFI's top 100 movies ever. These are the top 100 memes ever. So you might not recognize a few of these. Uh, how many of you recognize Rebecca Black's Friday? If you don't recognize it, I urge you to go out and, and watch Rebecca Black Friday on YouTube, and you'll thank me when you do. Um, here's the, the dress. What color does that dress mean? Uh, there's some other ones. People write kiss. Don't tase me, bro. Uh, <laughs> a Nick Young question. Um, Anyway, on and on. Uh, it's a fun article. And what's fun about it is it has a lot of, it has a, these memes from, God, the past seven, eight years or longer, perhaps. The point being that memes are not a new thing. 
as you'll read, the idea of what a meme is came uh, came uh, in in into its own maybe in the 1970s, I believe, um, and it, so it's been around for a long time. But the internet has spread the the ability to well, it's given us the ability to spread these memes and to put them out. Now, what do these things have in common? What must you share? Um, in order to understand these memes or to get these memes? And the answer to that, obviously, is the understanding of what they mean. Um, like this, for example, well, uh, the Raptor's not a, not a, not a good, good, uh, <laughs> shirtless Putin. The Raptor's probably not a, not a very good example. But a lot of these, well, for example, um, the Fortnite one. The, the the disco uh, safe haven, uh, disco floor safe haven. Uh, if you didn't know what Fortnite was, you would have no idea what that is. Okay, if you've never played Fortnite, you might have no idea what that is. My daughter plays Fortnite all the time, so I have an idea of what Fortnite Fortnite is. I have no no concept about what that meme is talking about. So you have to have a shared understanding in order to get the memes, and that's where rhetoric comes in, right? It's con it's about context and audience. Memes can be used for uh, for very effective purposes. They can communicate things very effectively. Um, the semiotics of memes is just like the semiotics of, of language, in that a meme is a sign that is pointing at some meaning, that, but that meaning has to be shared, right? If you have ever uh, looked at semiotics or if you understand semiotics, it essentially means that or what it studies is how we share meaning. So the word bird, if I say bird to you, and maybe you speak another language, you don't know what bird means. We don't have this shared meaning. But even after I say bird, even if we speak the same language, we might have a different concept of what a bird looks like. I might think of a crow, and you might think of a robin. So these are different levels of understanding, and and um, and it memes have that that type of relationship with language and with with knowledge and with understanding. So they're a very complex, uh, very complex communi communication, um, despite the fact that we usually uh, use them to laugh at. Let me show you what I mean. Without that shared knowledge, this meme right here, which is a very, very famous meme in China, it has absolutely no meaning to us. Do you find that funny? Uh, do you understand it? Because I don't. Um, they explain what it is here. Even after they explain what it is in this particular article, it still doesn't mean anything. It's not very funny. Uh, but this is one of the most famous memes in China. Here's a meme in India that's a very uh, famous and, and um, often used meme. Again, do you know who this person is? Um, do you know what this says? Neither do I. So again, we don't have that shared shared meaning for them. It's a, it's a very kind of shallow um, uh, communication without it. I mean, we can see what it means and so forth, but it doesn't really have that meaning. So memes, like any other communication, have to be shared with other people. In other words, you have to have a, a, a context for what that, that meme is. Um, and this goes for absolutely every single one of them. <clears throat> what that means is that if you were to use one of these in professional communication, you would have to ensure that your audience shares the same understanding that you do about that particular meme, about the meaning behind it. You have to have a, a common common ground or common context before you can use it. Okay. Now, are these things ever used, and can they be used in professional communication? And the answer is yes. They have been, and they, they are used in professional communication. Let me give you one famous example. A few years ago, um, it was rumored that YouTube was going to bring back live streaming on its platform. Before that, YouTube had tried live streaming before, and it, it didn't. They didn't really get any traction with it, so they shut it down. And it was rumored that they were going to bring it back for sporting events and for for um, uh, for other reasons. So a reporter at a tech-based uh, journal or magazine sent an email to a YouTube staffer, an engineer or something, and asked, hey, are you guys bringing back YouTube 
uh, streaming. And this is what the uh, YouTube staffer sent back to the, uh, to the journalist. <laughs> so what does that, that mean? Now, if you've seen this GIF, it's a little girl going, I don't know. And that was basically the, the, the answer that, that they received. Now, when they, as you can see here, when they, the, the writer responded back and asked, is this kind of some kind of joke? Uh, Google said, no, that's our official response. We have no idea, right? It was almost kind of like a no comment is, what, is the way they took it. They, they took it as a no comment. But this is professional communication. This was in a professional context for uh, one of the wealthiest companies in the world sent this out as their official uh, statement on, on business policy. All right. That's professional communication. Um, it's silly and it's tongue in cheek, but, but it was professional communication. Um, and that's just one example. There are other examples out there. You have to look for them to find them because oftentimes people don't define them as professional communication. Uh, this actually made, this made the news, made the rounds quite a bit because it was funny. But maybe that's the point, right? Um, what if their response was this GIF as uh, a way to um, kind of deflect uh, people's questions about what they're actually doing? Well, now they're all talking about the response. They're not talking about whether or not YouTube is streaming anymore. All reporters could really talk about was a response that YouTube sent out as its official response. And had they said simply, no comment, um, well, that's an entirely different rhetorical message, isn't it, that they're, that they're sending, rather than sending this cute gif, which is kind of funny and tongue-in-cheek and everything else makes us laugh. So memes can be used for a very, very specific pur purpose in professional communication, um, and they should be used for a very specific purpose in professional communication. But here's the thing, had this been... Uh, a GIF that nobody recognized or a meme that nobody understood, it would have had the same results. So that shared meaning, that shared meaning has to be there before it can be used for any type of real or professional purpose, okay? So don't think of memes as something trivial. Don't think of them as um, something to just kind of waste time or, or to laugh at. Think of them as genuine artifacts for professional communication. Think of them as yet another tool that you can put in your toolbox of multimodal communication that you can use at, at, for a very uh, precise reason and time. One other thing to mention is that this is an animated GIF, and animated GIFs are a separate section um, for this, this, uh, this course, of course, but uh, memes and, and animated GIFs and visuals and videos sometimes will all overlap. A meme is a very specific thing, okay? And you can use meme with a very specific a meme with a very specific purpose, right? Versus an animated GIF, right? So, um, some definitely some things to talk to think about. Now, let's look at the module itself. Um, so, as usual, you'll have a, a discussion prompt. I want you to find an example of a meme uh, and complete an analysis on it according to the expectations for discussions. I would like you to find an example of a meme that's used for professional communication purposes. If not, just find any other one. And, and really any of them could do. It doesn't matter if it's an animated GIF or if it's a, a static image, okay? The one does not simply march into Mordor, GIF would work, or um, brace yourself, winter is coming, GIF would work, or uh, excuse me, meme would work. So any of them would work, but I would just want you to conduct an analysis and I want you to do it with the readings in mind. Okay, um, use the language that the reading that our readings use, and I want you to obviously cite your readings as sources and use your readings um, to back up the arguments you're making. Right. Um, next, and this is an easy, easy, easy one. Oh yeah, uh, grad students, sorry to forget about you, uh, but you have an outside reading to do and summary of of, of a different reading uh, about memes. Okay, um, this is is one of the 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 easier projects you'll have, uh, a meme and analysis. So the project draws on this module is reading about memes. There are two parts to it. The first part is to create a contextually specific meme, and two, create an analysis that discusses the rhetorical and technical aspects of the meme. For the meme, you're welcome to use any tools that you choose, such as Photoshop or GIMP if you want, 
Alternatively, you can use online meme generators, and I give you a few different uh, uh, URLs that you can, or websites that you can use. Regardless of which you use, the meme must include certain specific aspects, including it needs to be relevant to people like you, so college students. And if you want to get very specific, college students at New Mexico State University. It must be quickly understandable by your classmates. All right, so if you're to show that meme, actually, as your classmates go on the discussion prompt and see your meme, they have to immediately know and understand what it is that you're talking about. So it has to have a shared context, in other words. Uh, turn, in your meme through, turn your meme in through Canvas. And you can do it as a JPEG, as a PDF document, or you can insert it onto a Word document, save that, and upload it. However you want to do it is fine. Um, and then finally, write an analysis memo. In addition to the meme, you must also write a memo to me that analyzes your rhetorical choices uh, made in the meme itself. You must identify what shared context or knowledge the meme relies on, discuss the meaning behind the meme you've used, and how it creates an argument that your audience will understand. Generally address how you make your argument through this meme. The memo should be formatted according to the analysis memo guidelines. Okay, So quite easy. Uh, it doesn't take a, a, a lot of work to, to do this assignment at all. Um, be sure and rely on your readings. Use your readings as, as uh, sources for your argument and try to analyze it according to the guidelines in your reading, okay? Uh, as usual, have any questions, please let me know. Please have fun with this assignment, okay? And, and again, think of it from a professional communication standpoint or even a technical communication standpoint. How could you use a meme within a professional communication um, context so that it would serve a particular purpose that you have? What might that purpose be, all right? So again, good luck. Let me know if you have any questions on this. Uh, otherwise, thanks and take care.